Excuse all the noises you're hearing. I think my neighbors are trying to kill each other. My mom is in the other room talking, but that's how it's gonna be. Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Monica and this is Mini Reads and this is the start of a weekend reading vlog. It is currently June 5th. It's Friday, I just finished all my classes. The glasses are back because I'm not wearing any makeup and I wasn't gonna put any makeup on for this video. My cat's about to jump on the bed, so if it this moves, I'm sorry. And I haven't read anything since the 31st of May. I just have not been in the mood to read. I've tried to read this, but I just can't concentrate. So, what are the plans for this weekend? I want to get through Born, I want to get to White Fragility, and I want to get through one of the, the Jacoby books basically. That's what I want to do. Is this going to happen? Possibly not. <laughs> but I like that if I'm filming myself, then I can kind of force myself to read because I'm filming it. You know what I mean? It's like that peer pressure of if you're gonna film yourself, you might as well do it. So I'm trying to get through this through audiobook, but Here's the thing, I've been using audiobooks to fall asleep. So basically, I've read this book like three times, except I've never read it. So I'm gonna actually sit down today, go through the audiobook, go through the physical book as I listen, and I'm gonna spend a couple of hours trying to read this book. It's really good so far. I've just been in a horrible reading slump. So I'm gonna do that. And I want to finish this first because this was like top priority for me last month and I didn't get to it last month and my cat, my cat is about to be thrown out of this bedroom because this sweater is new and she just about ruined it. Look at her. You should be ashamed of yourself. Welcome to the, we to the weekend reading vlog. I'm gonna try to get some reading done see if I manage to finish any books this month. So my idea is to read at least an hour of this and then try to go to bed because I've been not sleeping well. Is this vlog anything else for me complaining? I'm gonna stop complaining. I'm gonna get to reading this and I'll talk to you later. So the sun is going down and I'm really tired but uh, as you saw I'm on page 121 which means I'm 50 pages away from halfway point of the book. What I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna read up until the halfway point I think. I'm gonna try to read up to the halfway point anyway and then I'm gonna just call it a night. Part of me wants to read more but I'm really, really, really tired, and I just kind of want to call it a night, uh, get to half the halfway point, finish this tomorrow, and uh, so far, I am loving this book. This is probably my favorite Jeff Vandermeer book I've ever read. So, what I've gathered, it's typical of Jeff Vandermeer, where he does this thing with nature and sci-fi and mixes it together, and this woman named Rachel finds this thing, this blob, basically. And what starts to happen is that the blob starts to become sentient, in a way. And she becomes like a mother to it. And she starts teaching it about the stars and about survival. And it's really engaging. And well, she lives with this man named Wick. And he's basically like a drug dealer. Well, he's not basically like a drug dealer. He's a drug dealer. But there's another drug dealer that uses like the remnants from a company that basically, I think, destroyed the world. <laughs> I I'm sorry I'm being vague. It's just that if you've ever read a Jeff Vandermeer book, you know that that's just how you describe his books. But anyway, and there's also like mentions of people that have grown like they have wasps instead of eyes and it's really weird but really really cool i actually think i am liking this a whole lot more than annihilation and i love annihilation 
but it's also really creepy and weird and I just I don't know I'm, I'm, I'm really really loving it but super tired and the sun is going down and that means that I'm getting sleepy so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna listen to the last like 30 minutes of like a timer that I have for my for the audiobook and then I'm gonna call it a night and I will see you tomorrow So as you saw in the previous little footage I took, I woke up this morning at 6 in the morning because I went to bed last night like at 10. But then I went to bed and instead of reading, I decided that I was going to fall asleep again. <laughs> so I fell asleep again from 7 to 9 and then I read for an hour and I got to page, let's see, I got to page 213 of Born. And I just have to say, this is definitely my favorite Jeff Vandermeer. Like, this has blown Annihilation out of the water. And I really love Annihilation, but this is just... This is so good. And I'm trying to think of a way to explain it, I, like I did last time, because it just keeps evolving. But if you've ever read Jeff Vandermeer, you know that explaining Jeff Vandermeer is kind of like... What? What, what, what can I say about this? This explores that typical thing I love, which is what makes a person a person, what makes a human a human, and now Born has like the ability to transform into people, but the way he gets that ability, well I'm not going to spoil it for you, but let's just say, <laughs> you know, and I love the relationship between him and Rachel, and then there's another character named Wick, who is, this, who is like Rachel's partner. And I love how he acts and it, it really makes me feel like like Born is Rachel's kid from another marriage and Wick just doesn't want to accept him. And I love Born as a character. I think he's really sweet, he's really cute, and it's really clear that he loves Rachel. And I don't know, this book is just I don't I can't explain it because explaining Jeff Vandermeer is like I don't know. Everybody's like making lattes, I think. But anyway, I'm gonna go have breakfast. I've had a banana. And I'm gonna hang out with my mom and my husband. I'm sorry you can hear my neighbor. He's like, he decided right now would be a great time to just do some more construction on his house. So, um, I'm pretty sure this Annihilation Authority and Acceptance, and there's another one called The Dead Astronauts, which I really wanna buy, are all in the same universe. So there. Now, this is making me want to read Annihilation again and actually finish with authority and acceptance. We'll see. We'll see what happens. So, apparently, remember, this is my month of finishing series. So, I'm trying not to start new series, but finish series. And I just realized that this might be... It's not like a part of the Annihilation series, but it does seem to, like, have some similar elements and, like... It's almost as if this is what happens after Annihilation. I don't know, I haven't read the whole series yet, so I can't say, but yeah. Also, we can appreciate my dark circles. You see them, I see them, we both know we're there. And I also, I straightened my hair. Not sure I'm liking this look. I'm, I'm, I think I'm gonna go back to my curly hair soon, but I don't wash my hair that often, so we'll just have to wait. Anyway. I'm gonna go because everything is making sounds all over the place and you can barely hear me so I'm gonna continue on with this and I'll see you guys in a bit hi guys you guys are gonna fall is that better I I'm sorry if this is like a crazy angle or something but it's currently 2 p.m. I haven't read anything <laughs> because we had brunch with my parents and I got a package from Amazon and I wanted to open it here for you because I know these are some books that I ordered so I'm gonna haul them anyway at some point but just do like a little unboxing here for you I'm gonna cut myself by mistake always cut away from yourself Monica there we go oh my god I can already see the first book and it's 
beautiful. Wow. Okay, so the, oh wow, that's a lot bigger than I thought it was going to be. The first book I have here is Who Fears Death by the same author as Binti. And this is Afrofuturistic because y'all know that I've been on an Afrofuturism kick. And I just want to say that I was originally going to wait on that video about Afrofuturism until I had read a few more books. But with everything going on, I thought it was a good time to throw out some recommendations. And I know my friend Sarah over at, I always want to say Voyages and Toms. I, I'm sorry, Sarah, I forget your channel name. <laughs> I just think of Sarah's channel. She said she started reading this, but it was actually really sad, so she stopped. But um, I'm really excited. And that is a beautiful, beautiful cover. Look at that cover. I'm just so excited because I definitely love Binti, so... Yeah, the next two I have in here, I have one more incoming. This, oh, I didn't think they would do it for the for the paper. Oh, this is such a floppy paperback. But I have here The Weight of the Stars by Kay Ancrum. And if you watch Books and Lala, which I'm pretty sure you all do, <laughs> but if um, this is one of her favorite books. And I know this is a sapphic sci-fi romance, slow burn thing. And that cover... Again, I love all of these covers, man. And then the last book I have here is this one I'm so excited about because it's been a while since I've gotten a new um, sci-fi uh, short story collection. And this is Wastelands, Stories of the Apocalypse. And this fe features Octavia, Octavia E. Butler, but then it also fe features a few authors that I don't support, but I thought, you know... Octa Oct Octavia E. Butler is basically a figure in the Afrofuturistic movement so I bought it for her and I hope that some of my money goes to her and I just think that seeing her name next to all of these white men <laughs> that are kind of problematic is a little bit of a refreshing thing you know to see a black woman uh, writing sci-fi and being credited in fact she's the first person on this list and I think that that's really exciting and I'm really excited to read these short stories and yeah I have one more book incoming but I think that that's not gonna be in the vlog so you'll see it in my haul let me check the name it was actually recommended to me by somebody here on youtube and i saw that there was only one left on amazon and even though i never pay more than 10 euros for a book i just thought that this book was worth it but let me check one moment here we go yeah definitely not gonna make it for the weekend vlog but it is so long been dreaming post-colonial visions of the future and this was um edited by nilo hopkinson and Abundir mahan sorry again pronunciation i'm trying but anyway uh look at this cover you guys oh let's see if my phone will focus 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 on the phone there you go it's beautiful. It's another short story recompilation, but this one doesn't only feature uh, black authors, but also Aboriginal authors, Native Americans, Latinos, um, and that kind of stuff. And as a Latina myself, I really want to see more Latin people writing sci-fi because I love sci-fi and I know that it's not the most diverse of genres so I'm honestly I'm kind of obsessed with this cover I'm, I'm kind of obsessed with this book in general it's really big I don't I don't know if you can see like the difference here yeah you can definitely see that and I just think that this cover is gorgeous the colors everything like if I was gonna make one of those favorite book covers or favorite books on my shelves uh this one would definitely be one of them so i'll talk to you guys later after i've done some reading again the summer is not my best reading time it's really hot and i kind of just don't know i've also have been having issues with my mental health so i like to just kind of lay back here and like mindlessly mindlessly scroll through twitter i like to play games with my friend uh, that lives in the united states who doesn't watch my videos but i love her anyway so yeah, but I'm really, really excited. I, I, I left the book outside, but I'm really excited to continue with Born, finish Born, definitely still loving it. I think it will make it into best books I've read this year. Uh, 
it's that good it's really that good I have a feeling it's gonna be kind of sad at the end so <sighs> we'll see anyway uh, that was it for my little unboxing I also got a bathing suit but I'm not gonna try on a bathing suit for you no matter how much I love you <laughs> it's just this is not not what this channel is about not that there's anything wrong with it it's just it's me it's me and my own body issues and body image problems so um, I'll see you when I see you actually I'm gonna see you in a bit because I want you guys to take a look at my cute outfit today because I'm feeling super cute and I haven't felt super cute in a while like I said I'm having a lot of mental health issues <laughs> you know but I'm fine and today I feel like a cutie patooie and here we are as promised my outfit of the day I'm wearing these cute linen pants they're a little bit see-through but you know what yeah I'm wearing underwear big deal and then I'm wearing the shirt that I bought but it wasn't cropped and I cropped it myself and well you saw me in the video a little bit of makeup nothing crazy and then these little sandals that I got from Venezuela they were actually made by hand for me um, a shoemaker would come to HBO where we worked and he would uh, give us designs and then he would um, adapt them to our feet and it was great so um, I love these shoes and yeah that's what I'm wearing today I feel really cute today I feel like um, your space pirate is on a holiday and yeah and Rodrigo's there say hi bro guess what he's doing he's playing video games no. Yes, you are! <laughs> now, but you were playing video games. And here we have a sushi ball. Hi, sushi ball! That's right, baby. And here we have a pen pens. Hi, pen pens. And here we have a bookshelf. Yay! Uh, with the books that I'm supposed to be reading this month. And also, look. It came, and now they sit together nicely. You'll see this one in the upcoming haul too, but yeah. Um, for those people that don't watch these videos, um, there you go. The house is kind of a mess, but that's fine, right babe? Yes! <laughs> oh, and I also, I brought out my sewing supplies because, well this is not sewing supplies, but this in here is all like my sewing stuff. Because these pants are a little bit big, like everything is, I'm, I'm too short. So I'm gonna sew this so that I can wear it without worrying that I'm gonna destroy the pants. So that's it. Um, other than that, nothing else going on in the house. I'm gonna try to read. I'm gonna really, really, really try to read now. So I'll update you about that. <laughs> I keep saying that and then I just never read. <laughs> so. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh, guys, I'm like, freaking out this book oh, oh I'm sorry I, <gasps> oh my gosh I'm like 20 pages from the end and I I can't say anything because it's a, like a big ass spoiler but Jeff Vandermeer oh my goodness oh my goodness this book is amazing please oh wow the thing about Jeff Vandermeer is like he's so good at surprising you. I'm sorry, I was looking at my cat. <laughs> he's so good at surprising you and I just, I can't believe what I just read. Like I literally had to stop for a moment and take out my camera and like talk to you guys because <gasps> I was so not expecting this. Like the weird factor is there, but the emotional factor of what just happened in this book that's the thing. I think Annihilation for me feels like like a little cold like you're kind of removed from the characters They don't really have names or anything But in in Born, I think you get so close to the characters and Penny excuse you ma'am. So sorry my cat is being annoying. She sees the camera and she wants to be a part of it But yeah, uh, I think Annihilation feels really really cold whereas Born you kind of get you fall in love with the main character Rachel and also with Wick who is her partner and Bourne and, and the magician and 
you fall in love if my cat wants to be on camera so bad <laughs> you fall in love with this world and suddenly something happens and it just changes the whole story it just changes the whole story and it's wow it's amazing um another thing that i wanted to say I, I i am like 20 pages from the end but i just wanted to say this i read in the back that jeff vandermeer was raised in the fiji islands and i think you can really tell his love for nature his love for like the place he grew up through his stories i also found yes this is called echo fiction i didn't know that, like the the style of writing that he did where it's like so nature-based was called echo fiction but i found that out and anyway i'm just gonna i'm gonna finish this book and then i'll tell you the rest of my thoughts i'm sorry i've got allergies there's a toilet paper roll on my bed so yeah so i'm gonna finish this book and i'll tell you my thoughts but right now i just i can't i can't i i'm, I'm so scared to finish it because Oh, I'm gonna, is my heart gonna be broken? I don't know, is my heart already broken? Kind of, but it's not, I don't know. Oh, I'm so excited. Okay, okay, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go and I'm gonna finish and I'll be right back. Guys, I found a book that I think beats Dune as my favorite book. I am so flabbergasted, so amazed, like, you know when you read something and you think, wow, I wish I had been the one to write that because it's that amazing? That is what that book, this book is. I... Wow, I mean, oh my gosh, this is... I'm gonna say it. This has beat Dune for my favorite book of the year. What? Oh my god, oh, I, I'm, I'm literally hugging this book. <laughs> it's amazing, I, I, I have no words, I have no words. The ending, the, just everything about it, everything about it is freaking incredible. And, wow, just, I, I have never read something so, so, well, one time, one other time. Everything about this book is incredible. I think this is Jeff Vandermeer's best book because I feel his other books are really cold. He has this thing of not giving his protagonists names and the fact that these protagonists have names and that they have pasts and and just Rachel, who is the main character in this book, is one of my favorite all-time characters. Like she's amazing. She's incredible. I love that she has the role of a mother because i i basically she takes on this role of a mother throughout the book and that that is a big part of her arc and that it doesn't make her like less of a badass because i feel that authors think that once you become a mother you can't be a badass uh, at least most authors think that and i love the way that she is such a badass and how much she loves this creature and like how she constantly worries about him and just her constant like reassuring of you are a person and that i love you and you are a person and how that like falls into the narrative and guys i just i don't want to say anything that will spoil your experience of reading this amazing amazing story it's so 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 good I, I i just like i said this this right now this is my favorite of the year so and i mean i read dune this year and i keep saying dune is my favorite book do i have a new favorite book <laughs> i think so oh my gosh i can I'm, I'm so happy i'm so so happy please 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 pick up this book also uh the main character is a woman of color she's a badass she's a mother she's a sensitive person because i feel like in sci-fi women are not allowed to be sensitive we're always like the badass masculine uh kind of you know like the stereotypical alien heroine you know 
and she's not. She's a sensitive, beautiful person that has, that loves and that, 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 honestly, it's her love that, like, pulls the story together and it's her love that gives you hope for this entire world. So, I am so happy that I've read this. I, I really, I can't stop smiling. It's, wow, just, I'm still, like, digesting the book and you for you it's been a second since you last spoke to me but it's actually been a couple of minutes and i've just been sitting on my bed thinking about this book like like i, I have this feeling of how have i lived my entire life without having read this book like like there's a before and after this book i just i kind of want to cry like that's how amazing it was. Now you're go you guys are all like gonna be like, oh my god, I have to read this book, and you're gonna be like, Monica, this book sucks. <laughs> like, I don't know why I'm being emotional about this, but <sighs> I just think that Jeff Vandermeer, I'm like Jeff Vandermeer's perfect <laughs> like reader. Like I'm his target audience, and he knocked it out of this part of the park with this book. I just. Oh man, I have no words. I've been stunned into silence. Like, I never thought that I was gonna like a book more than I like Dune or more than I like El Eterno Oscuro, which is still my favorite book of all time. But this is my close second. Like, they're both my favorite book of all time. Like, I just, I just, I don't understand how Jeff Vandermeer does it. I don't understand how he created this world. I don't understand how, like, I, I just feel like he's a writer who doesn't give a fuck. He's just like, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna throw this out there. Do people have wasps for eyes? How does that work? Who cares? Jeff Vandermeer doesn't care. And um, how can you love a thing that is not a person to the point that you love it into being a person? Jeff Vandermeer doesn't care that this thing has no shape, no form, no nothing. And he doesn't give a fuck. <laughs> and I appreciate that. I really do. I, I... Wow, there's just so much about this book that I... I want to reread it over and over like there were so many things there were so many things the main characters were amazing the, the the flawed nature of their existence was amazing all of it was just like it in the end the end of this book is like the end of El Eterno Oscuro where I'm just gonna think about that ending forever and ever and ever and wow I was gonna start uh, White Rage and then I just kind of feel like I need a moment to digest this book before I just do anything else because I just kind of feel like I said it's just I can't believe I've lived my entire life without reading this book if you're not like a reader maybe you you don't get these feelings <laughs> but, you know it's it's I, I think this is Something that, um, you know, like a, it's, it's, it's like, I rarely, not rarely, I, I, I often, I often feel that books are a work of art, but this is like, the only way I can describe it is like the first time I saw a Pollock in person, where I just kind of started crying. Yeah, I'm that, I'm that person that cries in museums, it's a whole thing. Uh, but, um, that's what I feel like, like I just feel, and, and, and honestly, yeah, I think what I like about Pollock is the same thing I like about Jeff Vandermeer, where it's just like, here's a bunch of stuff that might not make sense, but it makes you emotional anyway. I'm just rambling now. I'm sorry, I'm, I'm, I'm rambling, but I just... What an amazing book. What an amazing read. What what a what a what a gift to have read this book. It's really <sighs> Like uh, yeah, yeah. I, I, there you go. That 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 that's all I have to say. I I have no words except I fucking love this book. New favorite book of all time. I think this uh Solaris, Dune, Terno and Born are like my top favorite books 
of all time like if you asked me to do a top five i i don't know where what to include for number five maybe that's something i could think about that <gasps> bim tea there you go that's my top five in a turn oscuro born dune solaris and binti is it any surprise that all of them are sci-fi i think not i don't think so <laughs> anyway i'm just gonna sit here and think about this book and um try not to get emotional over it i know it says i <laughs> Does anybody else get emotional over books? I don't know. I just noticed that I've been rambling for like five minutes about being emotional and I have said nothing. But yeah, that's how I feel right now. <laughs> I'm probably not going to read anything else today. I just kind of need time to digest the masterful work of art that I just experienced for the last 12 hours of my life. <laughs> wow. Good morning guys, it's now Sunday and today I woke up with a bunch of allergies so uh, my eye itches so much but um, it's Sunday, uh, my husband's making some breakfast and I have plans today to read, to finish reading White Fragility and then I haven't decided if I'm gonna go right into White Rage or if I'm gonna read Binti home and we'll take it from there. I actually am <laughs> I just took my allergy meds, so I'm actually really kind of tired even though I slept so uh, But I am uh, wearing a really cute dress today. Let me show you Usually I wear this dress like for special occasions But I think it can be dressed up and dressed down and I like that about it because I like to have like less clothes in my closet that can be used for various purposes not just one so let me show you i actually wore this for new year's one year it's like it's kind of like it ties here it's kind of sexy but i don't know it's cute i love the color of it uh when i get a little bit better at making clothes i plan uh <laughs> like in a linen maybe so it's not entirely floor length, it's midi, midi length for most people, but for my short ass, it's like right ankle length. I'm wearing the same shoes from yesterday, so because I woke up and I wasn't feeling my best, I was like, you know what, it's time for a cute dress, some makeup, and some breakfast with my husband. So I'll update you after breakfast. We're just literally having coffee and toast. It's not like he's preparing a breakfast spread, but still. Very much appreciated when he is like, I'll make breakfast. I'm like, thank you. <laughs> I, I actually think he most he makes breakfast most weekends. So, uh, welcome to Sunday. I'll update you when I have read anything or if I read anything at all. Because I have a feeling today is going to be kind of a lazy, lazy day. But you know what? Sometimes we need those lazy days. So this is today's amazing breakfast bread. I made the orange juice. Spanish. And it is very Spanish because this is actually like blended up tomato with a little bit of olive oil and salt and it's amazing. And we got some bread and my favorite Dalgona coffee which Rodrigo makes for me mm -hmm. all the time. Mm -hmm. Right babe? Yeah. All right, time to eat. Que mm aproveche. -hmm. Okay, sorry if you can hear Rodrigo in the background. He's cleaning up, and I'm not gonna be upset at him cooking breakfast for me and cleaning up, so. <laughs> so anyway, I just wanted to show you guys that I got this handmade mask uh, from a Spanish creator on Etsy, and it's got a filter inside, and I really wanted to, like, get a cloth mask because I don't think we're, like, 
uh, of course, I think masks are important and wearing masks is an important thing at the moment. But we're not talking about the impact that these disposable masks are having on our world. <laughs> so, um, yeah, I bought a cloth mask, which uh, I'm very glad that they had different sizes because I'm like a hobbit. So I had to buy the teen size and yeah, it fits really well. It's really comfy. And yeah, I just wanted to kind of show you guys my little purchase. So the mailman came, as you can see, and I'm sure this is another book. So I decided to unbox it here for you guys. Uh, oh, wow, this is bigger than I thought. Oh, the cover's so pretty. I actually thought I wasn't going to like this cover, but yeah, I got... Do You Dream of Terra 2 by Tammy O. As you can tell, again, I'm so big into... Oh gosh, this is so pretty! I was kind of like upset that I didn't get the hardcover because I thought the hardcover was going to be prettier, but this is actually really, really pretty. This is, uh, again, a black author writing about sci-fi. I'm, I'm so excited about all of these new books that I hadn't had on my radar and now I do I just get super excited the the premise kind of reminded me of one of my favorite books of all time which is Jeanette Winters I'm sorry I sound so stuffy hang on <sighs> allergies but anyway this reminds me of one of my favorite books of all time which is Jeanette Winterson's Stone Gods I've gone on and on about that book from what I understand is they find another earth and they have to travel through it to build utopia then 10 astronauts are leaving everything behind to find it for a veterans of the 20th century space race and six are teenagers who've trained for this mission most of their lives not very excited about the teenage bit but you know it will take the team 23 years to reach terra 2 23 years locked in close quarters 23 years with no one to rely on but one another 20 years 23 years with no rescue possible should something go wrong and something always goes wrong so really excited to read this wow i whew, i don't know now that i have it like at first i was like oh, i'm not sure when am i gonna get to this blah 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 it's kind of about teenagers but there are some adults in here and again this book is just gorgeous everything is gorgeous and i haven't done any reading so <laughs> this is just my update my little unboxing i kind of like doing these unboxings just like this more like more chill style i kind of like filming on my bed let me know how you feel about me filming on my bed but yeah i'm gonna like kind of chillax for a bit uh allergies are still kicking my butt and then i will read some more so that's my update okay i totally forgot to start filming when we started eating hello mm -hmm. but we are eating our favorite macaroni and cheese of course vegan recipe and it's so yummy Yum yum. And I was editing and my computer turned off on me. Thankfully I had saved so I didn't lose anything or else I was going to get really really pissed off. So I'm just going to eat and then I'm going to finish editing and maybe do some reading. I started, I actually started reading, I, I didn't update you on this. I started reading White Rage by Carol Anderson. Anderson? I'm so sorry if it's not. I'm trying to think off the top of my head. But anyway, I'm reading that now. Going very slowly, taking my time. So far, I'm only like 5% in. But so far, so good. Very interesting introduction. And yeah, that's my plan for the rest of this nice weekend. Mm -hmm. So I'll update you either tonight or tomorrow and let you know how it all went. Hi, guys. I never updated you, and it's now Monday, and well... I'm just here to say that I basically didn't get anything else read during the weekend. <laughs> uh, I just, uh, so to wrap up, I read Born by Jeff Vandermeer and you saw how I felt about that. And I also read White Fragility by Robin D'Angelo. And I just want to say that I acknowledge the fact that this book has racial slurs in it. I, it's not that I didn't notice them like I I don't know you can not notice racial slurs the thing is um, the way I thought in my privileged little world that they were being used um, in the book was kind of like 
a way, you know, it, it, they, they, they were being denounced and also I thought that it was, I thought it was okay at the time I read it, but then I said to myself, why wouldn't I feel okay saying this or quoting this out loud, but I feel that it's okay for this other person to write and say these things. So that's a learning experience for me. I still got a lot out of the book and well, I, I just, you know, I, I, I have been struggling with myself about what to say about this. The only thing I can say is I am sorry. I, it's not that I didn't notice the racial slurs. I thought they were being used as a way to kind of denounce and, and I, I hate to say educate you on or, or, or make you feel uncomfortable about them so that you could like think about what seeing that word makes you feel but then again it was from a white author so i wouldn't feel comfortable with anybody quoting it or even like singing songs or anything that has those slurs in it so why did i feel comfortable with reading them that does is something that i have to deal with on my own so uh i'm trying to do better and i apologize that I didn't point this out before. But yeah, uh, that's it for this weekend reading vlog. I actually was just woke up from a nap because I'm not feeling that great. I've got allergies. But anyway, uh, thank you guys so much for watching. Thank you uh, for everyone that seeks to really point things out that uh, I, I, I have a choice to make. I can either react to it with anger. I can either react to it in a, in a negative fashion or I can say, hey, screwed up and I am sorry and I am looking to do better. And that's the whole point, isn't it? Because the whole point is to look at yourself or look at what you're doing and try to do better. So that's what I'm trying to do. I'm still reading um, White Rage and I'm also reading Binti Home. So this week, but that's another video for another time. For now, thank you so much for watching, and I will see you in another galaxy far, far away. Bye, guys. Bye.